Everyone is mute now. All right, so we'll be considering link building. That's the first we'll be considering today. Link building. So in the last class, I promise I uh, will be giving you guys uh, backlinks. So link building is about acquiring new inbound links to a website from external sites. You see that? The link building is also a proven tactic to improve brand awareness and ranking. It takes at least 10 weeks for the effects of a backlink to show up on your website. Many of us, when, I, when, we, when you say, um, give me backlink and someone does that, you want the result to come instantly. No, it doesn't happen like that. It can take at least 10 weeks. That's at least 10 weeks. Sometimes, I'm not saying that it must be up to 10 weeks, but 10 weeks is a, a good time to start seeing results of the link that your site have gotten. So, if you look at it, many, many websites, okay, different websites have different domain authorities. So, what you should be going for, if you're, if you're going to be doing um, link hunts, is to look for websites that have high domain authority. These websites will actually improve your ranking if they link to you. The, the, the effect of the, the, the link on your platform will increase the ranking of your blog. Not your entire blog. It helps to increase your brand reputation. It helps to increase your ranking on Google. If people see that, um, imagine your website having a link from entrepreneur.com. Let me say you're on a business website and you have a link on entrepreneur.com. It's something people will begin to believe you almost immediately. It increases your brand reputation. It also, it also gives your site authority on, on, uh, on search engine. It also gives your site authority on search engines. So it is something yeah. that you have to try to do. It's something you have to try to do. Link building is something you have to try and do because it will help your site to gain authority on the search engines. So look at this. Have referring domains are backlinks that are coming from multiple sources. Referring domains are backlinks that are coming from multiple sources. It is not about getting one site to link to you a thousand times, but getting many unique sites linking to you at once. I don't need that makes some sense to you. Sometimes one website can link to you 1,000 times. It is one root domain. So somebody who has one website linking to him or her 1,000 times just has one site linking, one, one external site as in like one root domain linking to them. But if you have like, you have like 1,000 websites linking to you, you, are, you, you, you actually have a very high authority. So some of the link building tools that you can use include Ahref. Ahref has a um, a linking uh, a linking um, feature in it. So, but before we get to that, let's continue. So I have this image here. I ask, if you need the best advice for your filmmaking career. Assuming you need the best advice for a filmmaking career, who will you have more value? Whose advice will give you more value? Whose advice will you get more value from? Is it Fela Durutoye or AY? Certainly, many of us know these guys. If I'm the one, I'll certainly go for AY because his movies really go well. Uh, he, he directed. Uh, Merry Men, one and two, Wedding Party, 10 Days in Atlanta, 10 Days in Sun City, uh, a trip to Jamaica. The guy has done amazing movies that have really done well in the movie industry. The guy is a personal development coach. So, as me, you're looking for, uh, you're looking for someone to get advice from in movie making. You go for the best guy, right? So. That's how we go. Let's get to types of backlinks. There are do follow backlinks and no follow backlinks. There are do follow backlinks and no follow backlinks. I remember I uh, remember asking a question: What is the implication of giving do follow backlinks to people? I said it simply 
it simply helps the site you're giving the link to rank more on search engines. Do follow backlink sends authority to the page where it is linking to. I don't know if you get that. No follow still has a level of authority, but not as that of um, do follow backlinks. No follow is just just is like a mention. Somebody says, let me say uh, entrepreneur entrepreneur.com actually mentions your website, or let me say for Gloria who runs a uh, real estate website. Zillow is one of the biggest real estate websites in the world. Zillow.com, Z Z I L L O W. Zillow mentions her website and gives her a no follow backlink. That no follow backlink is not a waste. It increases her reputation because Zillow has mentioned her. But if Zillow gives her a do follow backlink, that particular post or content that has that backlink will gain authority because an authority in the field of real estate has actually mentioned her and given her a do follow backlink. I don't know if that is understood. So that do follow backlink, she might have to pay a lot of money for it. So that is that about that. Okay, see so what it says. Do follow backlinks past search engine juice to the site it is linking to. Whereas no follow does not pass search engine juice to the site that it's linking to. I don't know if that makes sense to any of us. I hope everybody's mute. Someone's okay, everybody's mute. All right, so let's go about our link uh, building strategy. Please, this is very important. Like you have to consider link building. Um, recently in our in our team. We are dedicating the next one week to link hunting. We're gonna go for link building. So next week, we have links. Uh, we have a, uh, we have links to our website, but next week we our team is dedicating it to getting backlinks. So at least many people who are in this class will give us backlink. At least I have you guys as those who I'm gonna get backlink from. Then okay, let's look at this. What are the strategies to link building? One is you can spy on your competitors. Yes, you can spy on your competitors. You can spy on your competitors. How do I mean? This is our class yesterday, sorry. You can spy on your computer. Let me get to Ahref. Hope you guys can see my screen. Let me get to Ahref and see if I can, if I can get someone to spy on. Let me sign in on AHF. So AHF is one of the tools you can use for your link building. So I go to AHF. This is my website, World Scholarship Forum. Uh, let me see. I go to Site Explorer and I type what scholarship forum. So now that I'm on what scholarship forum, look at this area internal backlinks. Look at backlink area here. If you go to backlink area, you will see, if I click on it, let me say I'm spying myself. Francis, you're seeing that, right? So on this area of backlink, you will see, I don't know if you're seeing my screen. You will see websites that are linking to World Scholarship Forum. This is chamberofcommerce.org. They are linking to us. Then you will see the post that is linking to. The domain authority of this guy is 77. So I can decide to 
the URL, the, the authority of this page that is linking to us is 43. This is another southsudan.bees, groovypost.com is linking to us with four, with for you, uh, what is that? With Fury, whatever, I don't know what it is, is linking to us. There are a lot of other websites linking to us here. Eurodex.eu is linking to us with um, 69 Domain Authority. You have Midwest Sports Fan linking to us 58 Domain Authority. Look at this. UPENN.edu, 90 Domain Authority. What, what a Domain Authority. So you look at that. Then let me bring this down. By this side, you can see this place it says why this school is linking to us. Their link is a no follow link. I don't know if that makes sense. This is a no follow link. This is a do follow link. No follow. No follow. This is do follow. Do follow. You see that? All of this contribute to the authority of the website. First of all, the, 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 that particular page that has the link, like, like this is the content food locker scholarship program 2019 updated this is the guy that has the link from this website so this guy first of all enjoys the authority of the backlink first then it goes to the whole site as a whole so that is that about that so with this let me say i pick someone else's website one of my competitors is um Scholars for Dev. See, that's why I say you, should, you can spy a computer. Scholars for Dev. Dot com. Theirs will show immediately, so I can now see where they got they got a, a link from these guys. Education. Ki. Se. I can go and target this guy and say, "Oh, guys, I've run, I've, I've written a post that pertains to your website or that your audience will like. Please, can you give me?" a backlink do you see that do you see that so you can look at your competitors backlink and still go and target them look at this these guys have as in, these guys are doing very well now i see why they are doing very well look at them that same backlink that i got they also have it i think i've spied on them and and went to get this backlink so you can use this to find backlinks for your content where your computers have written content and people give them backlink you can go there, get back there. Sometimes it can be true comments. Let me see if I have it on the slide. So, okay, now keyword analysis. You can use keyword analysis to also find um, backlinks for your uh, website. When you're doing keyword analysis, you can do that. Then you can do guest posting. You can write an amazing post. Let me say for, um, for Andrew who, do I have some persons waiting? Oh, sorry. For Andrew who is, Doing, um, who is running a cybersecurity blog? You can write a content on cybersecurity, right? You can write a content on cybersecurity and decide that you're going to send it out to websites that will need that content. You tell them, hey guys, I've written a content on cybersecurity. Maybe you write it, you write, you write it, you write that content and you want to target, um, you're targeting US audience. You look for maybe Huffington Post and send them the content. Say you've done their research and gotten um, different um, views about uh, cyber security in US that this content would be amazing for US citizens to read. So what are you asking the how, what are you asking Huffington Post to do for you? That is publish this content on their blog for free and give you backlink in return. I don't know if that makes sense, but that is. To obtain that from uh, Huffington Post will be, uh, it will be very difficult unless the content is what they actually need and they cannot reject it from get that uh, content idea. So that's that about spying. Okay, guest posting. Social shares. When your content goes viral on social media, people can share it, share it and share it and you can get uh, backlinks. Then relationship and network. Like we are in this group, based on our relationship, we promise we're gonna, we're gonna give each other backlinks, right? 
So using relationship, I can give you back link, you give me back link, our links grow and everybody wins. I don't need you guys understand that. Then I want to talk about broken links. I will still use Ahref. These are link building tools that I've written out here. You can use email marketing tools, you can use Ahref, you can use Uber Suggest, you can use SEO, Mio, SEO Minion. I have SEO Minion on my browser. Look at it here, this, this icon here. Can you see it? Look at my icon, look at my cursor going here. This is SEO Minion, this is my browser. Once I open a page, I can click on SEO Minion and it will analyze the page for me and show me um, links that are broken links on that website. Then if, if I see broken link on someone else's website, I can tell them, please, this site that is linking to you have a broken link on your website. It's impacting your SEO. I've written a similar content that can replace that their own. Do you get that now? So please, this is my content. Use it to replace that, uh, the one that is broken on your website. And they will gladly accept it and give you backlink. You see? So you can decide to go around the web searching for those that have uh, broken links and send them an email that you have a content that fits into that broken link so they can repair the broken link with your own content. So that is for broken link. I many of you guys understand that. You can use SEO Minimum to, to scan a website and find broken links. Even on Ahref, even on Ahref, if I come to Ahref, see? On the backlink um, area, you see broken. Let me say I want to find broken links on this my competitor, scholars, or, scholar, um, scholars for Dev. I'll click on broken links. It will show me broken links on the website. You see? This site, the, there is a broken link here. The, the, the link is not found. Not found. Not found. You see? Not found. So you go to the you go, you go to the guys who have that who who have given them that backlink and request that you have a content that can suffice for them. I don't know if that makes sense. So we have a few minutes to this to end this class because it's not gonna last as long as the other ones. So that is for broken links. Then infographics. Yesterday, okay, the, the class before today, I mentioned that you can design infographics and it can be part of the content you can give out to people. See, I've done an infographics that suits this kind of your business. Infographics is almost a post, it's like a post, but it's summarized in pictures. So you, you can do that. Let me say uh, you do an infographics for, um, for Andrew or Gloria who has a real estate website. Andrew can do an infographics that shows how people navigate through uh, their system, how you move from your booting your laptop to going to your website to um, entering your password and now put the loopholes and all of that, like a, a, a picture that shows a summary of a content. Then you can send that to someone and say, hey, this is an infographics I've done. Use it for your blog and give me backlink. Just see this site actually did this infographics. That's an, another amazing way to get uh, backlink. Next is amazing content. Hey, if you write amazing content, people will come for it. It will get shares anyhow. Let's, let me say you write a content on Naira Land. You can go there and, and share your content and it makes sense. You put a link to your website. Many bloggers will come and copy your content from Naira Land and put on their blog. That way you build links. So. Then here is link building mistakes you should avoid. Whether you're a newbie or you are a pro, these are link building mistakes you must avoid. Don't use too many exact match anchor texts. Like you just want the anchor text to match the, the link of your, let me see, you are writing about let me say I'm doing a study abroad, uh, study abroad, and I have a category of study abroad. Then I want to link to that category. I want to send, a, I want to get um, a backlink for that, category, for that category. I now look for just study abroad. Then I will still look for study abroad. 
the next time I'm looking for study abroad and all of that. It must not be exact matching um, anchor text. You can use a phrase, even a synonym, it's, uh, uh, a phrase that means the same thing as your keyword can actually serve as the anchor text. So don't, 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 don't say it must be the exact anchor text that will link to that content. I don't know if that makes sense. Then next, not enough semantic keywords anchor text. That's, you are, you are not using the enough semantic keyword anchor text. The, the same thing I've just said now. When you are doing um, link building, try using semantic keywords anchor text too. The, the, key, the, the, the keywords that actually means almost the same thing with yours, or that converts the same message. When I say fully funded, or I say fully sponsored, I don't know if that makes sense. That's what I mean. Another thing is not having um, enough brand mentions. You should try and get your brand sent out there. Mention your brand out there. Let your brand be mentioned when you get a link. I don't know if you understand that. So sometimes we, we maybe we go to Fiverr. This is the next point. You go to Fiverr to buy links or tell people, oh, uh, somebody say, pay me $10 and I'll get you uh, 500 links. You now go and pay $10. You can carry junk links and fill on your website. Those links don't relate to your brand. They don't relate to your domain. They don't relate to your, to your kind of um, content. Those kind of links can harm your website. It can harm the territory of your website. And Google frowns at that. Because, okay, let me see. I run an education blog. It means um, people who should come to my website are more of maybe students. Uh, so education blogs should link to me blogs that have schools and something like that. Instead of, uh, sometimes you may, you, you may find out that my blog, would, uh, maybe if you go to buy links now, so we'll just go and carry uh, links from maybe Arabic link, a website that is in Arabic. I don't need to get that. They will go and pack link, um, links from um, aruyu dot aruyu, you know, Russia now. That kind of stuff, it won't, increase your domain authority, rather it might harm your authority. So next, technical SEO. The next we are considering in technical SEO is speed optimization, is speed optimization. So technical SEO has to do with the things I've mentioned, that's for um, link building. The next thing we're talking about here is speed optimization. How do you optimize your website for speed? Because this one is not, you've written an amazing content. Your content is so powerful. Ah, it's appealing. Anybody who sees it wants to read it. But now when they, load, when they click on the link to read the content, it takes eternity to load. So what are you going to do? You have to optimize your site for speed. One of the ranking factors for content is speed of your website. That is why I paid someone some days ago to optimize our site speed. Our site was loading around, uh, at around uh, uh, nine seconds. The guy finished the work and the site is loading at about one second. Sometimes under one second, the site loads. So you can optimize your website speed. What can you use? These are the tools you can use but you need to study them very well so that you can configure them very well. Many persons have these tools on their websites, but they are not well optimized. They are not well configured. Do you understand that? So like now, I, okay, we have these plugins too on our website, but this guy actually did a reset. He had to go back, reset the website, change, remove, if you, if you, if you, are my, if you have been on my website some days ago, you will see that there is a video on the homepage. The guy sent me, sent me a message saying, this video is heavy. He wants to remove it. Let's replace it with an image. And that, is, and that is exactly what we did. The site is loading at an incredible speed. So you have to optimize the speed of your website. So what and what do you need to do, to do this? First of all, implement site catching. With site catching, I mean, let your, let your content be cached. Like when someone makes a request from your website, the information is stored so that those who are within that location, and those as in next people who come to your website, the thing does not go into the database or 
inside the system to pull. It's already around the system. When someone visits your website, your site is already auto-loaded around the system that is just a click and it loads. That is what some of these catching um, plugins will do for you. The, one of the best, and one of the best, is WP Rocket and auto optimize. There are some hosting uh, um, plans that also come with um, catching uh, features. Like the hosting I use, it has its own catching feature, as a powerful catching feature. So upgrade your PHP version to the latest PHP version, very important. Then in, um, use lazy load. I mentioned it the last time. Use lazy load, lazy load. For the people who will be doing real estate website, they will have a lot of images. Use lazy load to make it happen. Then use minify JavaScript, HTML, and CSS. These, these are technical stuff. If you don't have coding, coding uh, knowledge, get someone who understands this to do it for you. Then minimize the use of scripts on the header and footer. Many of us will go to, oh, am I running out of time already? Many of us will go to uh, the header and, uh, of our website and pack codes there. We're saying minimize the use of scripts at the header and the footer. Then use a good hosting, very important. Use a good hosting. Then these are the tools you can use to optimize your website. These are the tools you can use to measure your site speed. As in, once you carry your site and put on Google page speed in, insights, it will show you where there are errors, technical errors. Says, there is um, too many redirects. There is too many uh, scripts on the header. There are too many. As in, it will give you, it will analyze your website and show you where errors are. So if you have technical knowledge, it can help you. The Aziz will tell you this. I think Aziz is a coder. In this, uh, he's one of the person who said is. Uh, he, he, I think he understands what I'm saying. Then GT metrics is another one. I use GT metrics to measure my site speed to make this viewer. Pingdom.com. You can find. These are tools you can use to optimize your website. Then look at this. We now go about schema markups. Another part of technical SEO is schema markup. Schema markup. So schema markups. See, schema is the way search engine sees your website. Just as uh, just as you bring a lens and white light pass through it, it reflects into red. I mean, it spreads into red, um, blue, green, indigo, and all of that, the rainbow color. That's how um, search engines see your website, through your schema. So that's what happens. So if you do good schema markup, what will happen? It will increase your visibility in the search results. It will increase your ranking in the search results. So when anything you are looking at on the search results, is a, is, is a result of the scheme markup that have been done. Yes, amazing content is good and all of that, but ensure that you have good schema. Make the web, okay, good schema markups, make the web callers understand what your content is all about. Those header tags, meta description, all of those things. Meta description tells the, um, the, the caller, this is what this site, this is what this um, content is about. So that when we search for things that relate to this, hey, show them this content. It means it's related to what they are looking for. So your schema is what interprets your website to your users. So it's what interprets the, the website to the, to the crawlers, to the search engine crawlers. So make sure you do good schema markup. You can watch as many videos as possible on YouTube about schema markups. Then generate beautiful rich snippets. That's, schemas will help to generate beautiful rich result snippets that increases your CTR on search results. Yes, when you search for something on Google, one page will, all, will always show up and have a bold, and have a bold, um, a, a bold result saying see more or something like that. That guy who shows up like that has done good snow up and the person claims more than 30% of the results that people see when they search for that keyword. So what does this do again? It improves brand presence with a full knowledge graph. With a full knowledge graph. Like when you do your schema very well, your, your, there's what they call open graph in Facebook. It will show your Facebook page. It will show your Twitter page. It will show your, 
as in these are schema markups that you can do when setting up your blog. Even it is possible, you can find it also in Yoast SEO. Yoast can also help you to generate good schema markup for your website. So, what are the types of schema markups? For us, who have, for everyone who have different kind of um, websites, there are different kinds of schema markups you can use on your content. One, there is a video schema markup for websites, recipes, frequently asked questions, how to website. If you run a how to website, there is um, there is product schema, there is person schema. Person schema, actually, for those who write uh, biographies, um, people's profile, there is person schema. For local businesses, there is local business schema. For videos, there is video schema. For books, when you see a book, you see ratings on the book, it's a schema. Courses, breadcrumbs, music, events, job, and all of that. So, so statistics show that 80% to 85% of websites with risk markup rank higher on Google than a normal content online. Did you see that? This, this was proven by Ahref that 80% to 85% of websites with risk markups rank higher on Google than those who just write their content like that. Schemas can, can be inserted as microdata or as JSON scripts. So you can get that. A plugin can help you achieve this. So just go to, go to uh, WordPress plugin repository and type schema. You will see different schema plugins people have written. And then follow the one that have one of the highest downloads. If, if one million persons are using it, it means it gives good results. Make sure it is compatible with Gutenberg Editor. Very, very important. So, schema markups for some plugins you can use. WPSC structured contents. We use this one. Yes, we use this one. Yoast Premium has this. Yoast Premium also has how to frequently ask questions and all of that. Oh, so we have WP Schema Pro, WP Review. We use this one. We use Hios and we also use this guy. So make sure you have some, of, if not all, at least one or two of these on your website. I think that's, that is all for schema markups. Then for multilingual SEO, check your Google Console to determine the languages to translate your site to. When you, when you go to your, um, when you go to your, to your Google console, you will see where people are coming from to visit your website. It will give you an idea of what language to do translation to. Do you understand that? If people are coming from Spain more, it means there are Spanish people who will be coming to your website. So you can actually translate to Spanish. Do you get that? People are coming from uh, Brazil. It means there is need for Portuguese for, 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 um, for, your, for your translation to go into the language of Portuguese. You understand that? So you can use an individual or agency that has human translators. Do you get that? Instead of automated translation, you can also use one of the tools we are using. It is called, um, one of our tools is called G-Translate. G-Translate is a premium plugin. We're using it and it is really giving us a lot of results. Then you go to your AHF tags for desired results, okay? Then the last thing we have here, Change your site target option on Google Search Console. If you go to Search Console, for those who don't understand this, I don't know how I'm gonna explain it to you. If you go to Search Console, you will find a place where you can decide that I want to target my website to those who are in US. I want to target to those who are in, in Nigeria. I want to target those who are in, in the UK and all of that. So if you have that on your website, you can actually, um, put your site in that language. Even you can, you can decide to have a subdomain and translate to that language of that subdomain. So then I said the last time, please make sure you configure your robot.txt file. That is what tells the search engines, pages to crawl and pages not to crawl. It helps to reduce overload on your website. So look at an example of a robot.txt file. I will send this slide to us. I hope that makes sense. I will send this slide to us. Then here are some of the add-ons you should have. Alexa, Hunter, Mail Tracker, Moz, Keyword Everywhere, Ahrefs, SEO Minion, and SimRush. 
get these guys. It will really help you. I think that should be all for today. Questions? Question, 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 question. Do you have any questions? Send it in the chat box so that I'll get your questions and answer them. It's like our time is up. Can I get questions, please? On the chat. Any question? Please, what does Hunter Mail Tracker do? Please, how much is the G Translate plugin? Okay, I'll answer those questions. And uh, G Translate is, is not so expensive. I think I paid uh, about 200 and something dollars for one year. So, but you can pay monthly. 